All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to General Mentorship. Today is uh, March 27th, 2023. And uh, I, I hope to make this a, an hour worth your time. You've got Miss Beth Hathoot with me here today. Um, this is your chance to bring any questions that you may have um, about the uh, notary industry or the loan signing agent industry that you may be struggling with and get help from your peers. Um, I do have a micro topic that I'd love to kick off the conversation with today. And I think it's something that everybody needs to hear um, because, um, and, and hopefully it'll resonate with you. It's, it's something that, you know, I've said many times in many different ways, but I wanna kind of slow it down and say it in a way that maybe uh, you'll hear it. Um, so first of all, I wanna talk about using the customer service that you already have to generate more business. Um, this is something that I think is overlooked in our industry quite often um, because, uh, you know, we work so hard to get those mobile printers and those mobile scanners um, to fill out our profiles. But sometimes I see a lot of notaries missing it. And you got to realize, I see a lot of notary profiles, not just at Notary Stars, but at Unlimited Ink Notary too. We have access to SnapDocs, signing orders, ZigSig. Um, I can see a lot of profiles and I see notaries missing it on many, many areas, but I want to, I want to slow it down and I want to tell you what I think you can do in order to kind of generate more business for yourself. And this is exactly how I did it. Now, if you don't want to become a signing agency, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to. This is how I did it when I was out in the field, just as a notary for myself. So the very first thing that I want to let you know is that your availability, um, it matters and sometimes notaries really don't want to put if they're part time in their profiles and I have to tell you, you really should put when you are available in your profile, so if you're a part time notary and there's not a place on. You know the 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 dashboard for you to put you know I work full time notate in your profile I work evenings and weekends or I work early morning and weekends or what your profile indicates. Let me tell you why coming from a signing agency perspective when i'm looking for a notary and you're not answering during the day and I happen to click on your profile. I don't think that your listing is dead I just think that i'm sending you the order at the wrong time, so it, it works in your favor to let people know when you're available. Also flexibility is another key factor that you really if you are not flexible you really want to work into your your business. If you are evenings and weekends, then truly be available and, and try to adhere to that and let your customers know I am flexible. Um, these are two things that I see that are overlooked. Uh, so letting people know that your what your availability is. And I, I don't want you to be afraid that if you are that early morning notary and you have a day job, a second shift job, or if you are an evening notary because you have a early morning job and you get off at 3 p.m. and you want to work till 10 at night, don't be afraid to put that in your profile to let people know when you're actually available so that when they're looking at you, when they when they might want you and you're not available, that they're not going to just say, oh, without they're never available. It might just be that you're they're sending orders to you and then they'll have in the back of their head. Oh, yeah, you know, call call Ronnie. He's available from seven to ten. Make sure that your clients know and put it in your email signatures. Another thing is a lot of you and and, you know, I, I talk about needing a mobile printer and a mobile scanner a lot. And actually, uh, we just added the ability to add a mobile scanner to your Notary Stars profile uh, just this weekend. I cannot believe in all this time that no one's ever caught that we don't have a mobile scanner tick box on there. We do now. Um, but someone brought it to the attention that they really wanted to put it in their profile. And, you know, if you, and I dare you to try me. Signing order. Um, they have a tick box that says, I only want to see notaries with mobile printers and mobile scanners. I wrote a blog about not adding that information unless it's actually true. But these are things that you can actually offer your clients, but don't just stop at your notary profiles. If you're walking into title agencies, this is how I got my biggest client. I walked in with my mobile printer and my mobile scanner on top of my rollaway. Uh, uh, I call it my carry on, but it's, it's actually just a briefcase. I walked in with those items and she said you're the real deal and after that I started taking it into every title company that I walked in the door for so that they could see that I was a package deal with my mobile printer and my mobile scanner now I know some of you have it in your cars and it's 
hardwired in there and that's okay too but make sure it's on your business cards and on your in your company resume and i'm not going to call it your resume you're going to call it your company resume uh it's something that i have it unlimited ink we have a company resume it's on our website you can see how i lay that out we talk about how we encourage notaries to have mobile printers and mobile scanners and we try to hire those notaries with mobile printers and mobile scanners so these are assets to your company assets that you work really hard for to 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 build up and then you want to really show you want to show them off uh, when you are going in to get clients but don't stop there and i promise i by the way, if you brought questions for today, get those virtual hands raised because I'm almost done with this little micro topic to kind of kick off mentorship today. And I would love to get started with your you guys' questions. But don't just stop with your availability and, and your in your physical at, uh, at, at assets. The next thing that you want to make sure that you are also putting into your profiles is your training. And I'm going to harp on this one a little bit. OK, training does not i'm sorry but i'm gonna take a little pause because and i know she sees it amy sites on there with that cute little baby and i just i could not uh could not stop smiling <laughs> thanks for getting my my little spiel messed up miss amy but that's okay you had a cute baby to distract me there <clears throat> um i want you guys to understand that training doesn't just say i've been trained at notary stars we have almost every loan product under the sun and when I build resumes for the notary stars that hire me, I actually put what they're capable of. You know, we know about buyer's files. We know about refinance files. We know about seller files. We know about um, home equity lines of credit. We know about HELOCs. When you walk into a title agency and you aren't able to have that conversation of what kind of loan products can you actually conquer, it, you know, it looks kind of weak because a good loan signing agent already knows how to have this language in front of the escrow officer that might hire them. Not all escrow officers do purchases. Some of them only do refis. Some of them only work with veteran loans. Some of them only work with, um, uh, you know, uh, hard money loans. And let's take that for instance, hard money lenders to me are like investors. They have a loan for people, you know, that they find trustworthy they do need a title agency involved but they're loaning out money you know at a really high interest rate much higher than we see and they're usually laid back settings and being able to say you know i understand hard money loans and what they are and that the documents are going to be different being able to have that conversation if you get picked by a hard money lender in your area to um i i, I always tell this story i had a hard money lender here in arizona and they would actually come in, I would go in, it was like every Friday, and they would just have them lined up on the table. They had this long hardwood table, very cool office. And I would just sit and move down the table and clients would come in and they would be all on the golf course playing golf. And they didn't want any questions. They just wanted me to come in, get them done. And the title agency was who initially sent me there, but I did a great job. So they would have me come back and I would just move down the table and it, you know, on a Friday, I can make what most loan signing agents would make in a week. It was a, a really sweet spot. But, and I remember the first time that I got a call about a hard money loan, and this is why I wanna say you need to put this in there. I remember it was Fidelity National Title and I had an escrow officer call me and she goes, Ronnie, can you do a hard money loan? And I said, is that like a drug deal? I mean, like, is this like, I, I'd never heard of a hard money loan. It sounds, sounds interesting, right? Like what is hard money? Like, what do you consider hard money? You know, um, I, it, it threw me aback and then she didn't send me out. So I started probing, like, what is a hard money loan? I went to her office. Can I see the documents? I want to know about this. And I learned it. And that's why we have it as training on notary stars, as well as all loan products. And you want to put that on the forefront of your resume, your profiles. If you are a notary star and you've been through our training, and you really understand that training module, your your real assignment after that is to make sure you put it in all your listings. Like I understand this product. I understand when a loan is closing in a power of attorney. The biggest fear an escrow officer has is sending a first day notary out to do a power of attorney signing because it's complicated and you know a lot of times they get messed up. So being able to to say I understand 
and I know how to do this. This is assets. You're, these, these things that you're training for, you're going out and buying assets, you're training, you're building up your brain, you're building up your resume. But then I don't see many notaries putting it in their profiles. I don't see, you know, I see people throwing up their notary to pro certificate. That's wonderful. Tell somebody what you learned in that course. I see people throwing up their loan signing system certificate. That's wonderful. But tell people what you learned in that course. I build resumes for the notary stars that hire me to do their resumes and their websites. And when I build them, I actually put their training in. And then when I'm going through and onboarding them, I tell them, hey, you should add more training to it. Uh, you should and, and make sure you notate. And I've got the language down when I'm helping people, um, you know, to to build their resumes, but you also need to be able to do this as well. Um, I, I want just to kind of bring this full circle. Other things that you can make sure that you let your clients know on a full circle uh, for this part of the conversation is if you're Ron capable, being able to know how to use your Ron platform, um, making sure you've utilized any testing that you can do. I'm currently testing on a Ron platform right now for a client that we have to get this ready for. I have to do test transactions. I, you know, Bill Bumphrey can't teach me on that because he's not on that platform. I have to go through and actually train on the platform, learn it, make sure I know how to use it for clients and then be ready for any notaries that are on that platform as well. Um, if you are Ron capable, make sure that you're advertising it, that, you, that you're ready for it. If you understand wills and trust or apostilles, make sure that it's on your business cards. Okay, um, make sure that you know if you're if I nine verification is something that you can do. Arizona notaries, I see very few websites or business cards or signatures that say you can do I nine verifications. And I have to tell you, you know, for about two years, I did probably. In about two years, we probably did a couple of thousand I-9 verifications um, because Arizona is really known for remote workers. So if you're in an area where does remote workers, make sure your clients know that you can do that. And then the last thing is we teach, you know, ask for review, ask for review, ask for review. We put out community tips on how to get them. You can turn those customer reviews into more business simply and this is what i do with every single actually every single call at unlimited inc and i think you guys have heard me say before that i've i turn away a lot of business every day and i do i tell every client that calls unlimited inc notary that you can get it cheaper at a ups store and that we specialize in mobile notaries either for convenience or because you really need it and about 50 percent of those calls move to a sales call and that's okay because I always end the call with, but if you ever do need a mobile notary, please store us in your phone right now because we're honest. And those clients tend to call, you know, years later have called. I've had you on my phone. I've scrolled past you a couple of times. I remember you. Um, those are the clients that I want. But the ones that you make happy when they say, you know, thank you. I really appreciate you. Don't just go for the review. Make sure that you say, hey, I really appreciate the good review, but when you know someone who needs needs a notary, please make sure to refer me. Keep my information handy. Put me in the back of a drawer. And, and when you say that to them, they're gonna remember where they put your information and they're gonna be willing to share your information. 90% of Unlimited Inc. success has been referral. I will, I will tell you that 90% of our success here has been referral in one way or another, whether it be clients that I worked with years ago now belong to the notaries that man, you know, we manage out. Everything has come from referral. Okay, so I wanted to start out with that <clears throat> micro topic for today and just let you know that you need to work your assets and they will help you grow more business when you show escrow officers and signing agencies I have these materials. I have a mobile printer. I have a mobile scanner. I have this education. I'm flexible. Here's my availability. And I'll say this, and then it'll go out on YouTube, and it'll get hundreds of views. And I guarantee you, I'm looking at some faces and making notes now. I will go to profiles, and a lot of the people that were here or watch the, watch the replay 
won't implement this in one way or another, and that's okay. But I promise you, using your assets to set you apart is a big deal. We've heard lately that there's a lot of, uh, you know, people who have left the industry and, and those sorts of things um, over the last, uh, you know, couple of months. But I have to tell you, I've been watching the numbers just primarily around Phoenix and California areas. There's not that many people who have left, left this. Some of them may be doing side hustles right now until it comes back. Now is the time to really set yourself apart. And I'll end it with this, and then I really want to open it up for questions for um, everybody here. Uh, you know, this month, of course, we brought on quite a few clients since January, but this month, I think it's really coming back. You know, I don't know if you guys feel that way. Is uh, you know, you can sh show by nods of heads, but we've been really busy at Unlimited Inc. And we're, we're getting even busier. We haven't even pulled the trigger, which we will by April 7th, on all the new states that we're opening up. We've been going through this integration process with a large client, but it's been uptick, uptick, uptick since January. And I don't think it's gonna slow down. I think it's gonna continue to grow. Um, you know, my prediction has always been by January, February next year, we're gonna be rocking and rolling again, probably back to the way it was right before COVID. We'll never have another COVID boom. But things will be back to the way it is. And as we grow through this period right now, this is where we really need to make sure our listings are on point, that we are, are showcasing who we are, what assets do we have to, to do, because here's the kicker. I'm starting to see, and if you're watching LinkedIn, and I know all of you are, I actually posted something in the Facebook group about how's LinkedIn working out for you. If it hasn't worked out for you in the last you know, six months or so, that's because everybody got fired and everybody's looking for a job. True story, all those title and escrow officers got canned, but now I'm starting to see big names hire again. I'm starting to get emails actually from title agencies here in Arizona and out of state saying, hey, Ronnie, you know, if you have an escrow officer that's out of work, we are starting to look again. It doesn't seem like a, a big hiring phase right now, but I'm starting to see people reach out and look to hire in. So with an uptick of business and getting, you know, an email here or there might be once a week, twice a week where someone sees, and I'm seeing it on LinkedIn as well. It's telling me that we're getting into that, that period where we're going to start building and building perpetually. It might have a little standstill between March and, and summer, but I think by summer, and I definitely think by the last quarter of the year, we're going to be really happy that's just like six months to, to see that real uptick. And I cross my fingers because I hope it to be true, but I really believe it will be. This is the time where we need to make sure we set ourselves apart as notaries and loan signing agents so that our clients that are now coming into new jobs, building their new notary list, because this is how it works, you know, and I'm just going to make up our arbitrary names. Let's say a lady named Amy works at um, and we'll just, this is not a real scenario, by the way, let's just say Amy works at First American and First American uses SnapDocs and that's their preferred platform and that's how orders must go out. Then she moves to, you know, a uh, company, uh, let's call it, you know, uh, <laughs> trying to find a name, uh, Curtain Title Agency. And, you know, she goes there and then she has free reign to use SnapDoc signing order, ZigSig, any of those things. And she's like, great, well now, I'm not restricted to using this list that my company provided to me. I can now build my list and do this the way that I want to. You're going to see a lot of that where escrow officers are coming back in. And that's why you want to make sure when you're walking in with those business cards that you have all of your assets um, listed out as much as best you can. And that's why we use a business card and a resume. And just to give you an example, I have mine right here. And I wish I had com fully complete, but these are our company resumes in a nice little folder. We have stickers that we got on Etsy that like beautiful sit right in the center. And then our company resume goes right on the inside and then on the uh, pocket here, a business card. So I go out and actively work in sales for Unlimited Inc. as well. So I walk in and talk to title and escrow officers and branch managers. 
And on our company resume, I don't know if you can see this, but you can download it from the Unlimited Inc. website. We have a section here called company assets. And, you know, that's something that, and you guys are welcome to go to the Unlimited Inc. Notary website and click on the title and escrow uh, section and download a copy of our resume. This resume is exactly my resume just now turned Unlimited Inc. Since I was Ronnie Mickle, signing agent, and then turned a company, all I did was change the name on the top and the logo became, my face became the logo. You know, that that's that's the only difference. Everything that we can add, and our resume is four pages. <clears throat> I will tell you most of you will only need two at the maximum. It is okay to have a two page resume, but one page of our resume in my defense is an onboarding form. So we have an online virtual onboarding where they can go if they're on the website. And then we also have this nice little intake form where it asks how many orders do they are they going to have, how many escrow officers on their team, and they can copy this page and send us all of the information if they want to. Very few few people fill it out manually anymore, um, but it does look nice because we didn't want to have a blank page on the last page. And if you're at a conference, it's a great way to capture information for them to do it. When we went to the uh, Arizona escrow conference. People were able to actually just fill it out at their table and bring it right back up to our table and before they left the conference they were onboarded with us. So um, take a look at how we do our resume if you need uh, inspiration. Um, you do want to make it you and don't lie on your resumes because you, you know I will tell you there that you can put whatever you want to on there, but the proof is in the pudding and most training courses these days are verifiable. Notary Stars is verifiable, Notary to Pro is verifiable, Loan Sending System is verifiable. You never want to get caught saying that you have training that you don't have because you will get blacklisted and that will be the end of that relationship. And I get calls all the time for recommendations from people who are on Notary Stars or could I uh, just verify that they actually are a member and that they've taken their training. Um, so don't lie. And I've had people even lie about notary stars saying that they took it. And I'm like, no, they have a listing, but they've never been to class. So um, don't don't do those things. Uh, all right, guys, I'd love to open this up for questions that you have brought in today. I know that uh, and I know that when we do these, sometimes it's a little hard. So that's why I try to do these micro topics to kind of get your mind going in the in a, in a certain particular direction. I really don't want this to be all about me talking. And I know that you guys have questions because our phones ring off the hook uh, seven days a week here <laughs> with questions. So does anybody out there have something that they're facing in their notary world right now that they need help with? All right, our first question is coming up from Luisa Scoggins. Uh, yes, I'm from California. I have My question is, you. Uh, I have heard you talk about the mobile uh, scanning or a printer in your car or whatever. I'm, I'm really would like to know how do you set that up? Because I, 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 I always hear about it, but I'm not quite too sure exactly how to do it to make sure that I could say I'm a mobile notary and have all the equipment with me. That's a really good question. And, you know, it is a uh, question that will that requires a, a little bit more conversation because there's more than one, one way to do it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually looking up a video for you on our uh, YouTube channel, and we have a, a series called Notary Stars Unlimited, uh, where it's like a basically like a 12 start uh, 12 step program to you know being the best loan signing agent you can be. And in that video, and I've got it here, and I'm going to share it in the chat for everybody, including you. Um, in that video, we talk about all the different scenarios of how you can set up your mobile printing you may not want to be the notary that puts in you know hard wiring in your car and go that route i'm not one you know and i had broke my back in three places i like the pull mine out in the in, a, in the little bag so i put out um that video into the chat there so you can watch that video and choose which way is best for you um you know, especially if you're starting out, you may want to start out with my method with just a smaller mobile printer that's like around $80. And then when you get more business, do the hard wiring. So I'll let you watch that video. And then if you have any questions about it, you can email me at contact at notarystars.com. And I'll be glad to answer any questions about that video. But I, I wouldn't want to rush you through all the different ways that you could do it without you seeing them. And we had a whole segment where different notaries came on and showed their different equipment. 
thank you. Thank you. And did you have any other questions? No, I was just curious on that because I am a mobile notary, but I don't, I was trying to figure out what, how do I, I print it for my car? You know, I wasn't sure about that, but I watched a video and, and that will give me an idea how to do that. Thank you. Yes. And if you do have any other questions after watching the video, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I just want to make sure you see all the options that are available to you because everybody's going to have an opinion, right? And that's why we did that episode so that everybody can see which which way would appeal to them more. And it's okay. There's more than one way to skin a cat sometimes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand. It was it was just a curiosity because I I didn't know. Did he take it in and plug it in at the uh, you know, at, at the customer's site? What? Because that's kind of awkward. Only because um, you need to kind of review it. At least I review it to make sure that I didn't I didn't misprint or something. And uh, kind of being awkward being at the place of the you know the signer. You don't want to do that. That's why I was wondering how how you did it. I think um, you know that does bring another point you know for a newer notary you may not want to print in front of them and want to review it but i i like to live on the edge and <laughs> um you know i've been doing it so long i feel like i could do them in my sleep so you know it it again to each their preference but i wanted to just say that to make sure you knew i wasn't being like oh here's a video go watch that i just I wanted you to know that there's a bigger story. I'm not just pushing you off to another video. No, I understand that. It, it, I, I, I'm not a new notary. It's just that I received an email from one of my um, vendors saying that you need to watch out now when you print uh, from your uh, printer because a couple of the pages or a couple of the, um, uh, the, the, the script is not completely there and it could be off. And so mm -hmm. if you don't do it correctly, they're going to dock you for, um, you know, uh, dock you on, on, on your payment. So that's why, you know, now I'm very careful when I print up to make sure that the fonts are in line or they, they're not there because that's what they have warned us about. So, which I think is kind of unfair because it's not, it, it's a, a printing problem or, or a software problem, but that's the reason I was asking that question. But thank you very, very much. And, and I'll go ahead and let somebody else ask a question. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. And then Miss Susan, you are up next. Okay. Um, I've got two questions. One is I live in Florida and in the summers, I mean, you get in your car and you're you're just dripping in like seconds almost. I mean, is it can you keep these things in your car over the summer or do you just unhook them and lug them back in the house every day? That is a really good question. Um, so my extra ink and toners, um, I, so I live in Arizona, okay? Mm -hmm. And when I was out in the field, most of the time, I did not have a garage. I had a covered parking, but not a garage. So I never parked my car in direct sunlight because here your car can get up to, I think it's like 160. It's like inside of an oven in here. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to be very careful. I mean, I think that's actually a fact that it gets as hot as the inside of an oven in our cars here. I don't know how it gets in Florida, but um, when I lived in Florida, I lived in a garage. It's so it, it really depends on if you're in a garage and covered parking. Some people have climate con control garages. Um, that that are all factors. But when I lived in Arizona, I parked under covered parking in 125 degree heat. I never had a problem with my ink or printer or toner going dry or or any of those things. I don't know how humidity affects it. If there's somebody that's in the humidity that has any advice on that, but the dry didn't seem to affect it. My printer seemed to work better. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, this may be just my own thing, but the hotter it got outside, it seemed that the printer worked better than when it was cooler outside. I don't know why that is, but it just seemed like it didn't have to wait for it as long and it just got through. But I never had a problem at all. And I left my equipment in my car um, most of the time. If I was going to be in, in, if I was going somewhere or traveling or whatever, I would always take it out of the car. But I'm kind of lazy. So I only took the things that had to be taken out of the car, out of the car. And again, I had a, you know, a broken my back in my life. So any less stress I can put on my back that I will uh, alleviate myself from doing that. Um. But I never had a problem at all, uh, and I would love to know if anybody else uh, has any any uh, 
somebody did put in there, Amy Sites put in that humidity will affect paper rollers. Um, so humidity might be an issue um, in, in Florida. Okay. All right. I have one more question. Um, I have had people lately, I don't know what it is, but they'll schedule. They're like all gung ho and ready to go. I call to confirm. They either don't answer their phone and they just like, they don't cancel. They just, you try to get in touch with them and they're just like gone. Is I mean, do I, should I be charged? General, general. Okay. Should I be charging like a upfront fee? I mean, if they pay money, are they less likely to cancel? Because I mean, I, I could have scheduled other people there. I had two in one day. I was like, what the heck? I mean, they just were gone. They yeah. were on my schedule. They scheduled, they were all ready to go. And Absolutely. And I highly recommend a lot of notaries um, use Venmo and, and a lot of things, and that's okay to get started. But I actually use Stripe and I built myself a jot form, intake form, where I can charge their card right over the phone and you know give them the top of our uh, terms and agreement um, in order to book. Again, you can go to Unlimited Ink Notary's website and you know kind of see our intake form. Actually, our hospital form, I'll look that up for you really quick. Uh, and Charge I'll them the whole fee or just the travel fee? I'll, I'll show you. So okay. these are the questions that we ask and I'll put this form in there. So this is our hospital booking form on here. And let me put that in there. So if a customer calls, I actually go to my own website and I actually go through this questionnaire and then charge them based on that conversation. Okay. I stopped. I remember the day I stopped and I, I, I talk about this often at Notary Stars. So I had like two or three cancellations and then I was paying for Google ads and they were running. And this woman called like three times. And on the third time I upped the price and she was like, didn't I talk to you earlier? And this was a, you know, a, a lot less expensive. And I said, yeah, but you clicked on a Google ad that cost me $13 every time you click on it. And now I have to pay for those because you keep shopping around. She didn't hire me, but I, you know, I got tired and I decided in that moment that I needed to find a way to start charging because like yourself, I would start to be on my way to an appointment or they would find it cheaper. And I wasn't yeah. charging that. I'm charging way more now than I was then. Um, you know, I found a way to, uh, I, I started just saying, if you, if you're going to book me, you're you know, I'm here, I'm available. And you can, you know, I'll pay, you're going to pay me, but definitely at unlimited ink, when we do a general notary appointments, we won't put them out for the notary until the card is charged. Okay. I, I think I'm going to have to start doing that because it's just, it's just of late that this has been happening. It's really annoying and it's, it's rude. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this does bring me to another, um, another thing. And Miss Beth, you can chime in on this if you want to, but for everybody who is charging uh, credit cards over the phone before you go out for service, here is a great piece of advice. Capture their thumbprint, whether you need it or not. <laughs> um, try to get them to put it in the notary journal because if they sign your notary journal and they put their thumbprint there, there is no disputing the charge because all you have to do is send your, their thumbprint along with that signature for that notarization and they will not be able to charge that back to the bank. Um, so. We actually encourage our general notary appointments here at Unlimited Inc. to capture thumbprints in their journal, but I don't do it because we have to do it here. I do it because it will protect them from a chargeback because if the customer charges back, and you got to realize if you're working at jails and hospitals, you're working with criminals, you know, and a lot of their affiliates might be criminals that need something done. Not saying that everybody that's affiliate of somebody in jail is a criminal. I have, I have, a former friend that's in there for life <laughs> but you know i i'm just telling you that a lot of people have associates on the outside and if you are working with those and then you might you never know who you're working with so that thumbprint will protect you problem and then uh r how are you doing today not too bad not too bad um i wanted to ask you a question about pay to play um mm -hmm. life for example thumbs up I really used to use Thumbtack as a, I used to get a lot of uh, notarizations from them. And then I also got a gang of weddings when I first started. 
Um, what do you think about the idea of just paying to play? And if that's something that we should consider as an option? You know, I'm going to tell you that um, pay to play in the notary industry is uh, doesn't really work and or in my belief system. So if you didn't know, Notary Stars is actually built just like Thumbtack and Yelp. It's actually the shell of the two combined sites. And we have the ability to turn it on where we can charge you for every lead. It, we don't do that, though. Um, not at this point. We have thought about it with the free member listings, but we haven't gotten there. And here's why. So usually, and I've said this before, when somebody wants a notary, they want it yesterday. They're, nobody really looks to get something notarized next week. They need it tomorrow, yesterday night. Can we do it right now type thing. Paying to play in our industry doesn't seem to work very well. So when you buy the lead, if it doesn't pan out, you've spent your money. And I just think that in our industry, pay to play. Now, there's two types of play to play, pay to play in my mind. Sites like Notary Stars, 123 Notary, where you get the call directly to your phone. That's a different type of pay to play. You pay for a listing. You are in a database. You are there, but they can call you, right? That's a different type of pay to play. They can go to your website um, or you can pay more to unlock those features like we do at Notary Stars. So full circle, and it's not launched yet, but we have a new directory coming out. You guys know I own Notary Stars and Online Notaries Public. I have a new directory coming out that is actually for everyone. I'm not going to say the name of it, but we will be charging for plumbers and all of those types of things to get leads because those are harder sales. They're going to have to hear sales quotes and get them back. And that's what Thumbtack really wants to do is it wants to give massage therapists, plumbers, all of those things, the ability to see if this client, you know, you'll notice that there's some questions that you answer when you're doing your Thumbtack profile as a user, like how much do you annual income, you know, all of those things. And then it sends it to that contracting service and says, do you want to buy this lead? They don't really have that for notaries. It just says, do you want to buy this lead? And my answer was always no, because it always seemed like they were wanting them right away. And I knew if I wasn't on top of it, if I was on the road and I waited an hour that somebody already probably got to them. That's true. That it happens a lot. Actually, you, yes. if you ain't got it quick enough, somebody else would have got, uh, gotten it before you. So you're right. Yeah. And so I don't feel in our industry that pay to play really works in that arena. You know, we're all going to have to pay for advertising and do those sorts of things, but not, I don't really believe in the thumbtack model for us. Now, for a wedding officiant, absolutely. It, you know, and, and those of you that have side jobs, thumbtack can be really amazing. Like if you do side cleaning jobs um, and or if you do uh, wedding officiant or if you do if we have any massage therapists, I know we have some notaries that are dotted by massage therapists. Um, there are people who do home organization, pet grooming or walking. Those are good pay to play, good pay to play um, things that you might want to put your hat in because those are not services that someone needs to book right now. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So now I'm the guy from Eternal Unions Weddings and Reggie's Mobile Notary. So my husband's right over here. But awesome. That's it. Yeah. I <laughs> I liked y'all's Facebook post because I like the, the logo and everything. Thanks. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. And then, Miss Danielle, we got a question from you. Hey, Ronnie. Hi, everyone. Um, I had a question just to circle back to what you were talking about with the fingerprinting. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I took, a, I, took a, I took a training course at our local college um, by someone that was doing loan signings as well as uh regular mobile notary work and um he said that we are not allowed at all to take fingerprints here in new jersey and we're not even allowed to have like a side hustle fingerprinting type thing he says there's only one company i forget what company he said in the state that's allowed to take fingerprints from anybody and you know it's it's you cannot do it Mm -hmm. And I've been taking fingerprints the whole time. Um, Do you mean fingerprints for your journal? Yeah. 
and he's telling you you cannot take fingerprints for your journal? Correct. Miss Beth, that's your cue. I I yeah. I so I'm sure there's somebody on there that um would have any more information on that because that's the first I've heard of it. I always thought that maybe it wasn't a required thing, but that you weren't allowed to do it seemed a little off. So some states, and I'll have to look yours up specifically, Danielle, but some states do not allow any biometrics in your journal whatsoever. So that could be as small a piece of information as a driver's license number or a fingerprint. So it depends on what your state says. Have you tried to access biometrics in your um, handbook? It's our whole handbook is vague. Like it's, it doesn't tell you much. And then, you know, I've tried to contact them and they don't, they say, read your, read your manual is what they say. And then they hang up on you. I've tried to send in letters to the, um, the state treasury is who runs ours. And so they have an area where you can send them an email, basically. And I've done that on several things. And it will get back to you mm. on anything. Let's see. Um, give me a minute. Let me see what I can come up with here out of your handbook, OK? OK. Miss Danielle, I'm going to leave your hand up there. And then we'll come back to the. I'm going to see if we can go to Miss Nancy for her question. And then Miss Beth will uh, let us know when she's got uh, a, a better answer on that. Uh, Miss Nancy, when you are ready, I am ready. Um, you had a, a meeting the other day last week about not getting paid. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last week I took a job, so I'm a realtor, found me on 123 Notary. Not the first time, say, Can you go do this closing when you're done? I'll pay you via Zelly. It's happened before, no problem. I got all the paperwork, I did the job. I invoiced him, I've called him, I've emailed him, I've texted him. He won't call me back. Mm -hmm. How long do I wait before I... What's his number? Let's call him right now. Really? <laughs> yeah, let's tell him we got 63 notaries throughout the country. And we'd like to know if Nancy O'Shea could get paid. <laughs> oh, uh, oh yeah. We'll turn, the, we'll, turn the, we'll turn him in. Um, I wish we could do things like that, but that's actually called harassment. And I actually oh, wrote that damn. article and we talked. <laughs> I, I hope you guys will read that article about slow to pay or non-paying because you can't do things like that. It's actually called harassment. So um, this happened on Friday, correct? Um, it, when did I do this? I did this on, hold on here with my little invoice. I did it on the 22nd. On the 22nd. Okay. Yeah. So 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th. And in his text messages to me, let me know when you're done. And I scan the documents in and I will pay you as soon as you're done. Okay. That was your business terms that you'd be paid as soon as you're done. Correct. I would maybe, does he have a website and contact information and all of those things? Yes. Okay. So you would need to send a formal email. And by the way, guys, I, I'm going to put this article up while I'm talking about this, Miss Nancy, because I want people to know this is kind of a really important topic here, um, because there are ways you can get your money. And there are, you know, uh, let me just get the typed up so I can pull it up while I'm talking. And needless to say, I'm very perturbed. I, I I probably agree, you know, if you're told one thing and then another thing happens, first of all, we have to exercise some sort of understanding and realize that getting that paid that fast, was it a closing or general notary work? Closing. Okay, so we have to express some sort of understanding about a closing because he might be waiting to get paid from his title agency. Okay, there may be something that happened, not with your paperwork, but with the closing, and he may be having to going to have to cough up the money. To me, offering a notary payment as soon as you close is absolutely unheard of in title and escrow because they have to actually close to release the funds. And most title agencies are not wiring the funds to the notary service because it's paid individually on each file. That's just a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff. So I would express some understanding first. I would send a, you know, in a formal email. 
during business hours. I would refrain from texting outside of business hours, only call during business hours so that you can, you know, make sure you have a good case and then give them a demand letter after I would give them 30 days to pay, to be honest. And, and okay. that's, that might seem like a long time, but that's within the industry standard 35 to 45 days. You send an official demand letter at 30 days and say, hey, listen, I haven't heard from you. Just following up, you know, here's my official demand letter. And, and, and this is what I want to tell you. Anything that you say, and I learned this because we actually are bringing on a debt collection company for Notary Stars in the near future. And we've been learning a lot as we are implementing this. If you write a demand letter and you say, I'm going to turn you into the attorney general, you actually have to do it. Otherwise, you're making empty threats and your state laws could actually wind you in hot trouble and you have to pay them money. So I wrote a whole article about this, which I'm going to and I'll link it on the YouTube channel as well. But I'm putting it into the chat right now about it's called slow to pay or no pay. If you want. And here's the other thing. If you you just can't do business until they pay you for the last one. And you don't fall for the I've had other ones. I've had a few like that before where they're like, well, I'll pay you for this one and the next one. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I need you to pay me for the last one first because I've already completed that assignment. Okay. Um, but in that article that I just posted, I talk about where to complain, who to complain to, how to complain, and what you can legally do. There are things that can get you in trouble. Um, actually going and talking to the title agency, skipping the signing, you know, sending agent code of conduct and going to the title agency, that could be considered harassment. You know, so you have to be very careful with how you collect. But one of the things I wrote in the article is if you want to know if he's been paid for the assignment by the title, you are allowed to legally call that title company and say, I'm just checking to see if this company has been paid for the assignment. That's all you can ask. And I okay. wrote it all out in that article um, so that you can that you can so you can do it. So it's not just the video that we did last week. I also did the entire article with a step by step on it. Um, so I would I would turn this into a 30 day scenario. Remember, don't take any more business unless the terms that you agree to on that first assignment actually come to fruition. And if not legally express your right. But the biggest thing is to find out where they're located and you can complain to the attorney general. I would if he's not in Florida, I would complain to the attorney general in his state. You need to complain where he is physically located and operating. So wherever the business is registered. OK. 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 I, and I don't have a problem waiting 30, 45 days. That's what I'm used to. But, you know, answer me back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll have to send you a funny video later, Miss Nancy. There's there there. If you guys haven't seen the YouTube video, uh, I wish we could do funny things here sometimes. But there's a funny video going around right now about best friends and the guy. It shows that it's, it's guys and they're like showing up at the door and, and he's like, if you don't want to talk to me, then turn off your read receipts. It's been <laughs> it's been two hours and eight minutes. And he goes two hours and, and eight yeah. minutes, um, that, you know, <laughs> So I, I, I'll send you that video because that yes. I get that feeling and I understand it and it's completely valid. And it also goes back to telling somebody I'm going to do something and then not doing it. You know, maybe that's not a wise choice on his part to say I can pay you within a day. You know, what was the 22nd? Just out of curiosity, the 22nd was a Wednesday. Maybe the file didn't close. Maybe there was something, and I don't mean something you did, but it could be if it was a he, purchase. He did reply to one text and he said, I'm sorry, it got really crazy yesterday. I'm gonna pay you shortly today. And okay. then ghost, crickets or whatever. Yeah, I would, I would, you know, I would maybe follow up in about five days by a text at the 30 day mark, send a demand letter, this is what we agreed to send screenshots of the text message. Be very polite and everything. Remember, we catch more flies with honey. Right. Very polite. And and I'll tell you, we've had demand letters at Unlimited Inc. too. And when they're rude, I'm like, Psh, you know what? I'll get to you by five o'clock. I'll send you it. I'll send you this at five o'clock. Those who write me and are very nice, I'm I'm like, okay, let's get in here and figure this out. Why it's usually a W9 or something like that. We get in there and we answer those questions. 
you catch way more flies with honey. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. And please read the article because I I'm trying to I get the word out. I, I want to get the word out to everybody, and I mean everybody. Read the article and grab it from the chat. Um, the reason I'm so adamant about reading the article is because I want you to know that you have rights and there are procedures that you can do, but there's also with debt collection, you have to be very careful because you can get in trouble by the way you do it. Um, so I want to make sure that you guys understand you have rights. You just have to do them in a, you got to do it in the right lane so that you don't get yourself in trouble with collect debt collection. Yeah. Perfect. Not be harassing them for sure. Yeah, no, I was ready to make that call. <laughs> like, no. um, if I can take a minute and go back to Danielle. Yes, ma'am. You're right, Danielle. You've got a really huge handbook, all of 16 pages. And it has zero information. The only thing I can glean from your handbook is that it does, it's not a requirement for your journal, but it doesn't say it's prohibited. In fact, it doesn't reference it at all. Um, so I it, have says, to... it says it in one spot and I've even gone through the statutes That's... And, in, and in the statutes, all it says is, wait, am I looking at the manual or statutes? The statutes, um, hang on. All it says is what it is. It just describes what uh, bio, and it's talking about like biometrics, like as if you were using. That's something. Her, that doesn't necessarily cross over to traditional notarization. Right. So, right. yeah, so that's a different animal, but for actual physical ink, thumb, fingerprints, it doesn't address it at all. It doesn't say yeah. that it, it's required for a journal, it doesn't prohibit it. For your journal. So you're stuck somewhere in the middle until you can talk to somebody or find a statute. Because I want to caution you that just because something is not addressed in your handbook doesn't mean it's open game for you, right? So, right. Yeah. Doesn't... Where else do I mean I I'm just finding a lack of so the person who I went to that did the class, he's like an assemblyman or he was an assemblyman. But he also still like there was all these new rules and laws that came up and he was the one that I think got it pushed through to get those new rules and laws. So he's supposed to be, you know, the guy that knows all the New Jersey laws. OK, so, so did he give you a statute? He did not give me a statute, but he kind of really was adamant and kind of mansplained me, you know, that. <laughs> I should not, I should not be doing this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, so maybe it's a new law that maybe was adopted, but not in effect yet. That could be as well. Do you have his contact info that you can ask him what the Senate bill is or the actual um, legal regulation so that you can look at it? Yeah, I think I do have his contact information from the course. Yeah. Okay. So that would be a good thing that you could try to get from them, either the Senate bill or the actual regulation if it was voted into law and let us know too, so that we can kind of update our database on certain things like that. Next time somebody asks, we'll say, you know what, Danielle Hill. <laughs> that. And then you can write a blog about it for Notary Stars. There you go. No. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sorry I couldn't help to you, but that's all I got. Thank you guys. I appreciate your help. But do keep us posted on that, Miss Danielle. We'll help you get the word out for New Jersey notaries as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll look into it more. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have Lisa Duffy up next. Thank you for being so patient. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I just wanted to address the lady that um, was asking about charging a fee for those appointments that go south. Um, I just wanted to add a little tip that I use. Um, I use Calendly, mm -hmm. which is the online calendar platform that syncs with your Google or your Outlook. Well, it syncs with a lot of different calendars. But um, they have a section on there where you can charge 
um, a person when they book the appointment. And so that's what I use. And I, um, I use PayPal as the integrated platform. And so I pass the, it's like a dollar 36, I think, uh, credit card processing fee. I pass that on to the customer. And that way I know um, that the appointment is solid. And in my, um, in Calendly, it, you have the option to add some questions. And so I put in there, you know, like what, you know, what kind of notarization it is, what, um, how many pages, you know, and then I say things like, do you agree to have all the pages to the document, even if there's only one page that needs a notarization? Um, do you have unexpired ID? Then I say, um, you know, do you understand there's a travel fee based on mileage? Like I put all of that in there for them to say yes or no. And then they have to pay before the appointment's booked. It won't book unless they make that payment. And so that's what I use. And then I tell them in, in my plat in the Calendly platform, I say the $25 deposit is um, deducted from your final total when we meet. Miss, Miss Lisa, I'm going to, I want everybody to, uh, if you're watching the replay or if you're here today, I want you, want you to know that this is brilliant and this is exactly, you know, very similar to what I do. Do you happen to have that link that you could put into the chat so other notaries could see um, to find or uh, could you type in Calendly? But if you have your link set up to where they can go now, nobody, if you buy something on her Calendly, she ain't given no refunds. Okay, <laughs> and I will, I will go and look for you on our YouTube channel and on here as followers to help her dispute transactions. So don't buy nothing, but you know how to go and click around without clicking the buy button. Don't put in no credit card because we ain't doing no refunds. Yes. <laughs> but everything she just said is absolutely brilliant. I can tell that you are, uh, you know, I can tell that you're on point with it and I'm very glad that you brought it up. Um, and you know, I, I would love for other notaries to kind of see your calendar so that if they haven't set theirs up yet, mm -hmm. the only thing that I would like to say and, and to you as well, um, I personally use Stripe. The, the cost is a little bit higher, but I found problems as I grew my notary business. If you have a busy week and you take in too much that PayPal isn't used to you taking in. So if you go like $50 or $100 or $500, like really fast, they will stop your account and freeze your funds where you don't have access to them. And I just did that one too many times. And I was like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. Stripe has never done that to me. They have an annual verification. They asked me what I think I could make and I give them a range and that's it. And they've never shut us down. PayPal was horrific for me. Now, if you so, haven't had that experience yet, I'm, I'm glad. No, because I only use PayPal for the deposit. That's it. I use Square for everything else. Okay. So when they're in front of me, I have my little square pos system that i use and and square deposits the money for the day that i'm um today's profits every single day into the, the account that i have it going to my business account um, but yeah paypal is only for that 25 dollars deposit um, i added my link in there because i have multiple calendars for every service that i provide um, and each, each calendar says, has a different list of questions for that particular service. Cause I, I provide live scan, I do workshops and trainings, you know, uh, apostes, notary. I do a lot of other stuff. I have passport photos, like a lot of stuff. And so there's a calendar for each thing. And for those who weren't able, I'm gonna share the screen and just show this to everybody. Um, so this is what she posted into the chat and I'm posting it again one more time just in case it because I know we have a lot of things going on in the chat. Um, so this is her Calendly page here and she's got her services set up looks really nice. Um, she's got a lot, all of her services set up here is what I can see. Uh, let's see if we can find just for notarization in office notary we will do uh, mobile notary. And then they can come on and choose. Uh, what mm -hmm. But if you on the uh, left hand side, mm -hmm. if you um, scroll down, you'll see all of my instructions. There you go. And yep. then when you click on the calendar to schedule, then there's a set of questions in there. 
So you put in your name and then it's got the information uh, so they can put in. And I see you have some requirements here. These little asterisks mean requirements. So you yeah. make those questions required so that they have to answer them before they book. Mm -hmm. There you go. And that's how I know they're going to show up. And, I, you know, I know it's a solid appointment. People who I give this link to, sometimes they don't schedule, of course. And that just means that they were shopping around and that they did me a favor. Yeah. And guys, just so you know, you can embed a Calendly onto your websites and then also use that Calendly link for someone who's ready to book. Um, so you, you can avoid them having to go to your website. My personal, because I want the website clicks, um, is to have them go to my website because then that every click you get on your website goes better. So we have just a booking page. That's why when you go to Unlimited Inc, we have just like a page, very simple with booking information on there. But this was really nicely set up, Miss Lisa. And I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, yes. you're welcome. I put my website there as well because I do the same thing. I, I'd rather them go to my website and click. But, you know, I have people who will call me for, a, especially for live scan fingerprinting, and so I'll just put the link in the, um, I'll send it as a text to them so they don't have to go through that whole thing. Yeah, we never leave money on the table, do we? <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. I'm so glad you were able to make it today. Thank you. And then Miss Sophia, thank you for being patiently waiting there. No problem. I got a question. Live scanning. I hear I've seen it and I'm interested, but I just want to know, how expensive is it, or if anyone knows, how expensive is it to get the actual um, live scan equipment? Because you know, getting getting um, you know the pa paperwork done is not that bad. I know it takes a little while, but my question would be, how expensive would you have to put in to to get started with that? Is there anybody on this call that does live scan? Because I do not. Um, if it, I do, okay. Can you tell us about live scan and what it costs to get set up? I, I can. I actually just finished a uh, live scan. So I started my live scan business August of last year. And then I I had lunch with Laura Buer one day and um, she told me that there was a position at the the National Notary Association for a live scan technician in my area, and I was hired immediately. Um, so, you know, I've done anywhere from 150 to 200 live scans a week between them and my own personal business. Um, and so with live scan, so I know a lot about it now. <laughs> um, the equipment is anywhere from $2,000 up to $10,000. And it just depends on the type of equipment, the um, efficiency of the equipment, the additional um, uh, peripherals that you get. Um, I recently learned that you don't have to, so there's, there's ink card fingerprinting, which is manually rolling the fingers on a card and sending it out to a different state. Um, and then there's live scan, which is taking the fingerprint images on a, a machine. And I always thought that those two kind of went hand in hand, like you needed the live scan equipment in order to do the um, ink fingerprint cards, but you don't. You can have an ink fingerprint card uh, business without the live scan aspect, which is a lot cheaper. It's it's anywhere from $1,200 to um, maybe $3,000. Um, but they, you know, there's financing, there's business credit, there's a bunch of ways that you can get that equipment. Um, but to me, it's worth it because um, you make that money back within, it depends on how well you market yourself and how much, but you make that money back pretty quick. Miss Lisa, um, you. if you don't mind pri private chatting me your email, um, I'm pretty sure I can pull it from Notary Stars, but if you don't mind pr private chatting me that, uh, I would like to reach out to you to see if we can't work out a deal for you to um, do one of two things, and we'll talk about that off camera, but I'd, I'd like to uh, pick your brain and uh, and get a conversation going about that to see if we can't pull some more information out of you that would help other people. Sure, I would love to. 
Awesome. Miss Sophia, did you have any other questions today? All right. All right, Miss Nancy, we have another question from you, and then we're going to finish up with uh, Miss Martina there. Okay, and actually, I have just two things, and they're both for Lisa. <laughs> um, when you charge that processing fee, right, and then you tell the people that the the deposit will be refunded or deducted from their total, do you also deduct the processing fee, or is that something they pay because it costs you money to process it? Yeah, that's something that they pay because it costs them. I only deduct the $25. Oh, okay. And yeah. um, the live scan, yeah, I would love to hear more because I'm looking into that because there are maybe two places here in my area that do it and none of them will come to you unless you have a whole group of people that need fingerprinting. Yeah. So I'm really interested in that. Yeah, I, I would love to give that information to everybody. We, we so gonna, Ronnie, I'm sending you we, my information. We're going to we're going to take care of Miss Lisa and we're going to see what we can what we can get out of her. Yeah. Yeah, cuz I won't even know where to start even charging people. Um uh and you said you had two more questions that was one. Did you have another No, question? no, that's that was a okay. question and a comment. Okay, perfect. All right. And uh our last question for today comes from uh Miss Martina. Hey, Ronnie. How are you doing today? <clears throat> Good, you doing great. Awesome. And so here's my question. I'm here in Arizona as well. And uh, I was looking for training and I and when I first thought about training, I went to your site and I was like, oh, my gosh. And I was on your YouTube channel and um, just watching and just your direct approach to teaching is what I really like. But what I want to find out is. So is the subscriptions, do I just need to subscribe for your training or is it a different platform or am I in the right place when it says notary stars, click here? Yep. So everybody has the ability to list on notary stars. Um, you know, currently we charge $10 to uh, $20 up front to verify the listing and then $10 every year to just make sure you're still in business and that listing's up to date. Um, but if you would like to be a part of our training, you get to choose which training level you'll be a part of. Uh, we have two membership levels, which is Notary Star and Notary Star Plus Marketing. Um, I encourage everybody that's brand new to just start out at the Notary Star level. You're still going to get some marketing in there. And then when you're ready to really go all in and know how to market your business digitally and in person, then upgrade to that Notary Star Plus Marketing level. Uh, there is a $20 difference. And the reason for that is, is in my marketing students that are on here will tell you, we don't really talk about notary work here. I mean, we use the word notary, but we talk digital marketing and, and walking in and we don't talk about those loan documents anymore. It is all about marketing. So if you're just getting started with those documents, the Notary Star level, um, that's a monthly subscription. And the reason that it's a monthly subscription, I always tell people I don't want $29.95 from you the rest of your life. Uh, of course, we're gonna continue to try to bring information to you monthly. But, you know, some courses charge 500, 1,000, 300, whatever up front. I never know if you're going to want to stick with it, first of all. So it gives you a chance to try it out. And if you don't like our style of teaching, you can leave. But, you know, I'm happy to say Notary Stars has a pretty good 90 something percent retention rate since day of the inception and continuing to grow. Um, some people just watch the previously recorded once they get busy or the replays once they get busy, but we, they always have that connection. Um, so it's really up to you how long you stay, but I'm always going to try to keep it fresh, you know, behind the scenes as well as Miss Beth so that we can, you know, keep you up to date, but that's the level. But then when you're ready to market, that's when you would want to cross over to the marketing level. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, guys, it's been a wonderful hour. We went a little bit over. I'm trying to get these down to an hour, but I can't can't just not talk with you guys. You know, this is my favorite part of the day when I get to turn off unlimited ink over here and go straight to only the Notary Stars computer and uh, and and get together with you guys. Uh, I appreciate all your questions today. I know that those watching the replay will um, will uh, you know get a lot out of it as well from your questions. 
If you run into any questions throughout the week, you know that you're we're just an email away. That's help at notarystars.com. That goes to me and Beth, and we can you know be there to help you throughout the week. But if you don't mind, please turn on those cameras and let's give our signature wave before we go through for the evening. And I'm gonna say it the way I always say it, and then Miss Beth will bring it home. If you are not naked, please turn on those cameras and wave to those future notaries that are gonna be learning this a few weeks, a few months, or a few years down the road. Wave to yourself if you're coming back to watch the replay. Wave to those who couldn't make it here because they were out doing a signing because they're watching the replay now. <laughs> and don't forget to download the chat before we go. And Miss Beth, how do we really say it here? Just remember that we're all in the same storm, guys. Some of us have yachts, some of us have canoes, and some of us are just dog paddling. So just remember to be kind, reach back, grab that notary next to you, and bring them along on the journey. Help another notary. Thanks, guys. Have a good evening. Everybody have a wonderful evening.